The following is a presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports. Live from Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison, this is the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show. Featuring coach Steve Peichel. For the next hour, we'll give you a sneak peek of the basketball season with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Tonight's show is brought to you by... If you've got a question for Coach Peichel, give us a call at 877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Now, let's go inside Quaker Steak and Lube to talk Rutgers basketball. All right, a pleasant Wednesday evening, everybody. Stand up and cheer as we are about to get the 2017-18 Rutgers college basketball season underway. I'm Jerry Recco. This is the, your head coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Steve Peichel. And coach, how are you? I'm terrific. Turn his mic it's, on. Yeah, you got to turn the mic on. Otherwise, turn my mic on. Yeah. So listen, it's been what? I haven't, I haven't seen you in about what, four or five months. It's, and here we go now, a new season. So what have you been doing leading up to, I know you started practice last week. How you been? What you guys been doing? You know what? We've been traveling. We've been recruiting. We've been running around, um, developing our players, continue to develop this program. I miss you, too, by the way. I don't buy that. You're a little bit busy now. Um, <laughs> but I'm getting to the point where it's, it's that time of the year. It's exciting time. Uh, it's Christmas for basketball coaches. It's right around the corner. The days are clicking by very quickly here uh, until we start playing for real. So it's been, it's been fun. And we're a year into this process. And... And I feel real good about our program. And, we're, really and, and we are going to talk for the next hour, everything Rutgers basketball. Before we do, though, what do you do for fun? <laughs> so you, I, I watch you practice. I watch you look at film. I watch you on the floor. I see your coaching staff. You guys are basketball, basketball, basketball. When you get, and all the recruiting through the offseason and the summer, when you actually get five minutes, what do you like to do? You know, it's, it's kind of crazy because we've moved into a new house. So in my, you know, 17 months, we've two houses and, getting my family moved down here to New Jersey and we love it. And my daughter went off to college this year too and she's playing at Northwestern nice. and, and, and the basketball side. So, um, you know, I have four kids and I love them and I go to their games and my daughter's a lacrosse player. My two sons are basketball players. Hopefully they'll be committed to Rutgers and class of 2025 is one of them. It sounds so futuristic. Yeah, yeah down the road, uh, you know, but you know, I'm a family guy. So I enjoy spending time with my family when I'm not on the road and doing the things I have to do for Rutgers basketball. All right. So let's get to Rutgers basketball now as we begin uh, a new season, a new year. Tell me first and foremost, what did you learn year one? I, I certainly watched you from afar at Stony Brook as you know I watched you beat my Columbia Lions every time we played you I knew everything about you and now I spent the year with you at Rutgers Big Ten play new arenas new competition what's the biggest thing you took out of year one as head coach here? I, I will tell you um, the thing mo most excited about and in, in, in one year's time I get to meet some unbelievable people Rutgers is a special place I'm honored to be the head coach and and I say that and you know I've been coaching for 25 years at some great institutions you know, Rutgers is a great place, and we play in the best league in the country, both academically and basketball-wise. And, and, you know, every day I walk into that, you, you know, gym, and I, I do look up at the banners, and my players will tell you every day I point up that, you know, not gonna, you're not going to beat Michigan if you play that way, and you're not going to beat Michigan State if you practice that way. Um, that motivates me every day. Uh, but, but the biggest thing, the passion that the fan base has – you know, couldn't be more excited and motivated every day myself to make this a program that everyone can be proud of. You know, and in my one year's time, we've done an unbelievable job. And Jerry, I have a great staff. They're, they're over, some of them are in the back there eating all the wings here. Um, I'm treating tonight too, so you can see they're really ordering stuff up. Um, but, you know, I was blessed to have a great staff. I work for, you know, terrific athletic director in, in, in Pat Hobbs. And, um, you know, we're gonna continue to build this program. It's been fun. It's been a fun year, and it's, it's been a very challenging year. I mean, it's a great league. I mean, it's not it's a tough league, league. You know, it's not a league that, you know, when Tom Izzo grabbed me after the season was over, and he said, this is the best the league has been top to bottom in his 25 years. Yeah. 
And so, you know, he, I said, welcome to the league on a year like this. And he said, no, I'm telling you, Steve, from top to bottom, it has never been tougher. And, uh, you know, so we joined the league at that time. Um, you know, that's been great. And so every day we're motivated, and, and my players have done a great job with the offseason. And, uh, you know, I'm having fun with them. And we'll get to the players in just a moment. But since you touched on it first, the coaching staff, the continu continuity that you have with this group. And I look at them and I say, boy, they're all back. And mm -hmm. I thought you guys had a really good season last year because usually – when you take over a program, you're going to expect a lot of bumps and bruises, a lot of pain and suffering and blowout. And you guys competed almost every single game to where you had chances to win almost every time you played. And the idea that that staff is intact, how important is that in terms of, A, what the current players see, B, when you're recruiting players to see that the group from last year is the group this year and you're building something forward, and C, for you, the comfortability that you have with these guys. You know, uh, you, know you, you hate to have changes in year one, and, and I'm very fortunate. I'm going to have a staff that people are going to come after. Uh, all the guys on my staff can coach anywhere, and I have former heads of coaches that have been coaches of the year and, and those kind of things, and to be able to keep them and have that continuity moving forward in recruiting and in everything is, is very important. And as everybody knows, I'm the sixth coach in 12 years. So you need some continuity to build a program. And um, we're going to be able to do that. And it was, it was great that we were able to keep our guys, even though they had opportunities to go to other places. All right, so let's get to some of the players. And we got a lot to do because we have a full hour. We can talk about the tournament, the tournament at the Garden this year. Uh, we'll go over the schedule, the new facility that's going to start to being built. We've got a lot to go over. But first and foremost, when you look at this roster, we had Midnight Madness last Friday. And the first thing that I noticed from some of the new players coming in is the size, the athleticism. It looks different to me already in year two from some of the guys you got coming in. Uh, but talk first about guys like Corey and Deshaun and Mike, specifically that group of three there and what their role is in leadership on this team. You know, so happy with, with the veterans and the returning players. And I always say this all the time, you're only as good as your veterans. You know, you could bring in all the guys you want. This is a real hard league for freshmen. Uh, this is a real hard league for first-time players in college basketball. And so you're only going to be as good as the returning players and the improvements that they make in the offseason. And I can tell you, Deshaun had a great summer. I mean, he really did. And, and is coming back to have a great senior year. And he's nine credits from graduating. So he'll, he'll be in a graduate program at mid-semester, mid which is another thing I'm very proud of. Uh, Mike had another great summer and Mike's in line to graduate too here at the end of uh, at the end of May so I'm very excited about him and Candido Sa our third senior had a great off season I think sometimes when you come from junior college that first year is really an adjustment I expect great things out of him he's had some really good practices and he had a great summer and then if you factor in Corey's improvement and he's shooting the ball better he's been a better leader you know, in our practice, I'm really excited. You know, we've had some NBA guys that, that you know, watching our workouts and they've seen the improvement in, in all of our players from last year to this year. So, um, you know, very excited and that's how we're gonna improve. It's, you know, everyone talks about the newcomers all the time. Tell me about the veterans on the team and I'll tell you how good you're gonna be. Well, you know, those and, guys have been good. And they set the tone and the example, and I know you're a coach and with Jay and, all, and your staff, you guys wanna preach defense and defense is gonna win games. and. We can go over some of the games where defense almost won you big mm -hmm. games last year. How important, though, is it when you've got guys like that buying in, mm -hmm. setting the example for everybody else going forward? Well, you know the tremendous part? We started practice, you know, four days ago, and, and we're putting drills in. That we had to teach every single guy last year, and now the older guys are teaching the younger guys, and we only have to kind of sub in. I could run a play this year that they already know. Right. You know, last year, every time I put in an out-of-bounds play, every time I put in press offense, every time everything, you know, was new to everybody. My philosophy was different. My cores, my beliefs, how to win were different. And now I got a little continuity, um, you know, from last year, and those guys are sharing their knowledge with the younger guys. And we work. Like, today we had three hours. I mean, we worked. And they already know how to work. So, um, you know, it's been a little bit easier this year. It's going to be harder. Year two is always harder because people now know your program and know what to expect. And obviously expectations always rise every year no matter what. Um, you know, but we're ready for that challenge. And I think our guys are excited about it. But we'll be, you know, we'll, we'll be good this year because our veterans will have good years. And that's how it usually works in college basketball. And just because you mentioned the league and teams knowing you a little bit better. And I think I asked you this probably mid 
midwinter last year when we started getting the Big Ten play. You're, I, I think the world of you, you've been a great coach. When you look around, though, and you look on the other side, and you see Tom Izzo, and you mm-hmm. see some of the names in this league. Mm-hmm. Did it ever sit there and say, I'm better than that guy? Mm-hmm. I don't <laughs> care how good he's been. <laughs> I'm better. Uh, sh- yeah. Nothing. They're hundreds of miles away, right? But I mean, seriously, no. like you're sitting there in the Big Ten and you're competing, and I, we can go through the games where you're looking five, six minutes to go in the second half. Mm-hmm. Year one, I'm better than that guy. You ever just look around and be like, wow, you know, this is where I, I am now. I have tremendous like respect and always have for those guys. You know, I, I've I've come up through the ranks and I've played a lot of them. I played a lot of them at the different stops that I've been. So you have tremendous respect for them. Um, and you know John Beeline's a Hall of Fame coach, and you know Tom Izzo's a Hall of Fame coach, and I think Fran McCaffrey at Iowa is as good a coach as there is, and you, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. I'm forgetting anybody. But you also um, have uh, a passion for your program, and you have a belief in, in what you've done and, and what you know your players can do, and you look forward to that challenge. So one of the reasons I took this, I love challenges, and this was a great challenge to play against the best coaches in the country and the best players um, and I've taken that head on, and you know I look forward to you know continued success maybe against some of some of those guys, and, and, and they certainly do a terrific job. And their programs won't get worse; they're always going to be great programs. So we have to get better, you, you know, at Rutgers. But I really feel my staff can compete against anybody, you know, in the country. And uh, we got to continue to have continuity and patience and build our program, you know, the way that people can be proud of it. But I love the challenge of being in this league, and I love the challenge of looking down the bench and knowing. I'm going up against the best. And speaking of challenges, and we're all over the place, but so be it. Because you, you, when you mention challenges, you know, we'll go back to the game at the Garden. The one thing that's impressed me about you and your staff have been when you had the tough losses, there really – all right, maybe there was one game here, one game there you can cherry pick that you didn't like the effort and maybe didn't compete like you wanted to. But I was always amazed how if you lost that tough game like you lost at the Garden in overtime in a game that, let's be honest, should have won. And I think you would admit with the way things happened at the end – uh, but competed to the very end. Overtime didn't go your way. You bounced right back. And for whatever reason, those kids bought in and believed in what you were telling them. And that, to me, was very impressive in that group and in your group that was running you know, that team. A, a credit to the kids, too. I, we all, you got to get off the mat. When you take jobs that are in rebuilds, you're going to get you know, knocked out a few times. you got to get back up off the mat. They did an unbelievable job. You know, of responding. I thought one of the worst games we played all year was Iowa at home, yep. and we turned around and beat Penn State on the road after that game. And the great practices got back up off the mat. And uh, you know, it's 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 a league again of, of pros. There's pros at every position at those schools. There's going to be seven schools ranked in the top 25, and some poll or another out of the 14 teams in the league. That's the league that we're playing in. And I think Rutgers Nation should be proud too. That league wanted us in that league. The company that we keep now academically and, and athletically is unbelievable and to be a part of this league um, is exciting and we just joined it really and uh, you know, better days ahead for us for just, sure. Just getting started no doubt. The number 877-384-1869 uh, also send your questions in on Twitter at Rutgers Radio with head coach Steve Peichel. Uh, we mentioned you know some of the veterans. Give me a rundown on some of the new guys, and two specifically, Geo Baker and then Mamadou Dukor, who I saw the other night. I'm not going to lie to you. You talk about emasculating. I, st- I stood next to him for two seconds. I mean, the guy is huge. Mm-hmm. Run down their strengths, what you expect from these guys, and what they bring to the program. Well, I tell you, we have a, a great strength and conditioning coach, Dave Van Dyke. And, I said, Dave, you can't take any credit for Sufi Mensa's body. Him too, yeah. And, and some of these guys, but Dave does an unbelievable job with our guys. And I think you saw the changes physically in Eugene Omarui, mm-hmm. and then Issa has gained 16 pounds, and uh, you know, in a year and a few months, and you know, some of those guys have come back bigger, better, stronger two in the program and that's really a credit you know to the job that Dave Van Dyke does but you know I'm really excited about all of our newcomers they all bring something a little bit different and uh, Geo Baker is as good a shooter as we, we, we will have in the program he's six four and a half um, he knows how to play he's gonna play right away um, I think we got a really good player and really excited because he does a lot of things he is cerebral he makes free throws he's as good a three-point shooter as we have in the program um, his defense is, is good. Um, he's athletic. You know, he brings a dimension, and he's very, very coachable, which I think is the most important trait of a freshman that you can have, a kid who's coachable, 
looks you in the eye, listens, and takes what you say and, and tries to implement it in his game. Um, Mamadou is, is big, strong, and physical. Um, he's going to help us in a lot of areas, but he's got tremendous leadership skills. You know, he's already become a little bit of a leader around the locker room and, and, and those kind of things, and he has a vicious workout habit. Like, he's, he's into basketball. You can tell. So, you know, very, very excited about him. Souf Mensa is as good a leader as we've had. He's been a locker room guy. He's been a, a joiner of our team. Um, you know, he's the one that organizes the uh, bowling the team goes to or watching a football game or going to watch a boxing match on mm -hmm. pay-per-view. You know, Souf has become that guy that brings everybody together, which we really needed. And, and chemistry, an important part of what we got to get better at, too, as a team and as a program. And, and so very excited about him. And then Miles Johnson may be as good a scorer as we have around the basket. He's seven foot six wingspan as a freshman, um, knows how to play a very good passer. I think people, I think he's a guy like CJ Geddes from last year, but he's more athletic. Like he brings those qualities, passing, uh, blocking shots, a big presence in, in, in the post. So very excited. And Peter Kiss will sit out, right. but he's already helped us in practice. He's a real competitive kid. He can shoot, pass, and dribble. He saw, saw his some, athleticism the other saw night. some of his athleticism, yeah. but he's a very good three-point shooter too. So, you know, the guys that we've added, you know, have helped, and I think the guys returning are, are better. All so. right, rewind to one thing you said there about Geo Baker, because I think everybody sitting here can be very excited. He makes free throws. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I, let me. So that, that's yeah. an interesting thing because I, I would think when you guys put all the time in and the kids are putting the time in, and I've been to practice, I see you guys shoot hundreds of free throws. It is not for a lack of effort by any stretch. And you're sitting there on the sidelines. You've got them in position to make plays. They're making plays. They're getting to the basket. You're getting the whistle. And then you go up there, clank, clank. Yeah. I mean, as a coach, it's got to be the most helpless feeling that you have for that full 40 minutes. You know what? It's it, it's it's a bad feeling to be honest with you. But you know, good teams make free throws. Um, you know, down the stretch, and we got to figure out, you know, a way to a get the right guys to the foul line, and, and b guys, you know, have to make free throws. But is that? I always wonder this because we know these guys are gifted basketball players. They can do things with a basketball that everyone in this room could only dream of doing. Is free throw shooting ninety five percent mental? I mean, it is. I will tell you, as, as people that watch basketball, you, the free throws are easy. Let, let me explain something to you. You know, if you go to the foul line in Madison Square Garden on national television, it's not as easy as it looks. I know what everyone thinks, and I could go to the line, and I've gotten the emails. My grandfather, yeah. 80 years old, can make free throws. All right, well, run up and down the court a few <laughs> times. Get exhausted. Yeah. Playing on national TV in Madison Square Garden, and then try. It's not as easy as it looks, hence, when you see these NBA guys, Dwight Howard, who gets sure. paid millions of dollars, and you know Shaquille O'Neal, who's arguably the best, one of the best players ever to play, it's just you know uh, not as easy as it looks. Now, um, you know I'm excited because we've added a few guys that can make them, but I also think our guys on the on the team are capable of shooting in the 80% quarries, and you know Mike Williams and those kind of guys, and they have to do that, and and you know then the other guys have to get better. At it, but free throw shooting, like any part of, of basketball, is very important. If you turn the ball over too much, which we did last year, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to lose close games. And free throw shooting, you're going to lose close games. And you don't make threes, you know, puts more pressure on your defenses to be perfect. And right. It's hard for defenses to be perfect. So every aspect of the game we got to improve on. But when you're where we are, um, you know, there's going to be areas that, that need that. And, and certainly, you know, free throw shooting is, is one of those. But your point guards, very important. You know, late in games, you know, good programs win games late because their point guards make free throws. And, and so we certainly have to do that. We'll take a break in one second. One other thing that you were talking about with the newcomers and I, I guess the talent level and the way they play, how much will that free up Corey now? And how much will his game, will we see a difference in his game? I think you really, and I'm already excited about it because – I can move him around now. See, last year we didn't have – he was our only point guard in the program. And then we were moving other guys that were twos and threes to the point guard. It's a hard thing to do if, if you, you're a football fan, which I think everyone here is. You know, when you take your wide receiver and make him a quarterback in the league, it it's, doesn't bode well for the head coach sleeping. Sure. Okay? And so, um, you know, last year we had – Corey was – 
really our only guy, and I think he's learning how to become a point guard. You know, what his gift is is he can flat out score, and I think what we can do now is move him around. Gio is a point guard. Sufi is a point guard. Corey is a point guard. So now we have three guys. We can Three guys can get the outlet and run the team. You know, Corey can go off the ball, and we can use him in different ways, and so can Gio Baker. So just have more versatility now, and I think you're going to be able to see him score in different ways, and I think other players now can help him score, which he didn't have the benefit of last year. No one could create a play for Corey. Right. You know, so um, he's going to have a really good junior year. I'm going to be able to move him around. He's going to be harder to guard. He's going to be harder to scout. So there's going to be a lot of different things that, that we're going to be able to do for him from, from other positions. And he's going to play a lot of the point, too. So I'm ready to get going. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's start the season. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hit you with – we'll get some reaction. I also want to hit you with some of uh, the recruiting. In terms of what's happening uh, at the campus and how that helps you recruit, the schedule, we got all sorts of things to go. Still have a lot of time. Uh, the head coach here, Rutgers men's basketball, Steve Peichel, here at Quaker State and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. Uh, we are back in a moment on the Coaches Show. Don't go away. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. When you're looking for tickets to that sold-out event, there's only one place to go. TickCity.com, the official secondary ticket partner of Rutgers Athletics. Scarlet Knight fans can save 10% on all orders when you use the discount code RUTGERS at checkout. From sporting events to the hottest concerts, Broadway and family shows across the country, all your ticket needs are covered at your fan-friendly ticket source. TickCity.com, that's T-I-X-C-I-T-Y dot com. We'll return to Quaker Steak and Lube in 60 seconds. This is Rutgers Basketball from IMG. When Samantha was in dire need of a new heart, she turned to RWJ Barnabas Health, who performs more adult heart transplants than any healthcare system on the East Coast. I'm still here. Jean cherishes every moment spent with her great grandkids thanks to our kidney transplant program that ranks among the nation's top 10. Still here. Robert promised his granddaughter he'd make it to her next birthday. Thanks to New Jersey's only lung transplant center, he did. I'm not going anywhere. From corneal and pancreatic transplants to heart, kidney, and lung, our patients aren't who they used to be. They're better. Learn more about our transplant centers at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center, St. Barnabas Medical Center, and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Visit rwjbh.org slash transplant. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. All right, welcome back to Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison, New Jersey. We're here with the and basketball coach at Rutgers, Steve Peichel, on the Coach's Show. We're going to take some questions for Coach on Twitter. Also, guys, don't be shy. We have a microphone over here, live questions. You don't get this opportunity often, so don't sit down and relax. Come on over, ask some questions. Uh, I am going to start with a couple, though, on social media. Sometime, have you looked at these, Paul? Am I good or am I going to read something stupid? Are we good? Look at it first. Fantastic, as I'm reading it. All right, so, hmm. It's always great. All right, so, Coach, this comes from Jeff Metallo. He says you made great strides uh, year one. You've got big newcomers coming. What do you think will be the biggest difference from last year to this year? Well, you know, there's already a, a lot of differences. Um, you know, the team knows what I expect and, and the demands and the culture that we've created. Um, you know, our veterans are better. Um, they had a whole summer to lift and get prepared for the season. And I think the newcomers that we've added are going to help us in a lot of those areas. Free throw shooting was mentioned by you, but turnover is huge. To have two more point guards in the program, I think, are going to help that area. And we're more physical and more athletic. And I have a chance now to change this team a little bit. Sometimes, you know, when you inherit a roster, you know, those pieces, you got to kind of put them all together to kind of help you 
win as many games as possible. That wasn't necessarily how I want to play last year, and now this team will be a little bit more how I want to play up and down the floor and a little more pressure, you know, defense and those kind of things. How, so. That's interesting. So you obviously they're not all your players because you didn't recruit them, and yet you had to adjust to them. How difficult was that for someone who had been at Stony Brook for so long mm -hmm. and done it your way for so mm -hmm. long? Mm -hmm. Your adjustments on the fly to not only start to – you know, create the turnover, but also to stay competitive. You know, and that was the biggest part, and I've been through some of these rebuilds, and I love the guys that stayed in the program and, and worked for Rutgers the last, you know, last season. You know, I, I said, people ask me early on, what's your style of play? Well, I just got to figure out a way to win. You know, didn't exactly, C.J. Geddes wasn't exactly the most mobile big guy in the country, but that was our big guy last year, so let's figure out a way to put him in a, in a position to be successful. We had athletic guards. We didn't have such athletic front court. You know, you have a lot of different pieces that you got to kind of mold together and figure out a way to win. Now, I think when you see us, we're going to run a little bit more. We're going to press a little bit more. We're going to blitz screens. We're just going to do some different things that as we continue to mold this roster that, you know, I kind of want to play that way. And, and last year was more figure out a way to beat every team. If we had to slow it up, if we had to play zone, if we had to play man to man, you know, you know, how to beat a team on a particular night, not a certain style that I could play that I thought could beat a team. The amount of hours you guys must spend looking at film. God bless you. A, a lot. That's the one, that, all kidding aside, the one thing I think people don't understand, and, I, you know, being at Columbia for 11 years and now with you for a year, and I don't think people understand the amount of footage that you guys go through. It's not just the time on the floor. It's the time in the offices that you guys put in that goes to that 40-minute game. To me, is insane. You know what the funny part is? Like, you know, we just left practice today, so we had three hours in the gym. They lifted for a little bit too. And then we're now breaking down film of practice and we're statting it and we're talking about drills. And then for tomorrow, we'll sit down as a staff and say, we didn't like this, let's change this drill, let's add this to this drill. But the amount of work that goes into, you know, building a program is, is unbelievable. But it's the exciting part too. These freshmen now are seeing film for the first time. Like. Mm. You know, we're explaining them what to do on the fly, and they don't really understand it. And then we sit back down with them with the film and say, sure. this is why we said this to you yesterday, and, and watch the film. So um, film a huge part of, of, of building programs, and you can only do so much with their legs. You really, the biggest jump from high school to college is, is what you can expand in their knowledge of basketball. You're going from being a regular basketball player to you're trying to get a master's in basketball. And how do you do that? You watch film, you sit down, you learn, you know, and, and, and that's what we try to do with film, and we do a lot of it. And I think we also forget that these are 18 to 22-year-old kids, for the most part, kids turn into mm -hmm. men, and going to shoot around a lot of times, watching you on game day, and we'll see the stuff that you're putting in. And they'll run it, and then the game will come, and they'll miss it. And he got to say, guys, come on, we just did it yeah. four hours ago. So very frustrating. That's why I give you guys a lot of credit. Uh, here's a question for you again on social media. Growing up in stores, who was your favorite basketball player? Growing up in stores, who was my favorite basketball player? College or, or pro or doesn't matter? Who was I'm your huge, favorite basketball player? Huge <laughs> Boston Celtic fan. So I know people here are probably Knicks, Nets, but I grew up in Connecticut. You have a choice in Connecticut. I live right in the middle. So, you know, I would have to say, you know, growing up, I loved the McHale, Parrish, and Bird. Of course. You know, that was my era, and, and oh, to this day, I love Kawhi Leonard, though, right now. Like, he's my, maybe my favorite basketball player in the NBA right now. I think he does it the right way. He's quiet. He plays. He does a little bit of everything. He helps his team, leadership, all that. He's probably my favorite, you know, current guy. Very cool. All right, let me get to the schedule. Um, schedule comes out. And you guys have a great home. I mean, you want to talk about a good home schedule. You I'm want to pack play. the rack. <laughs> Settle in because you are going to do that. But there's a couple of things uh, to the schedule. It's not that you have all these home games. It's also that the Big Ten play starts earlier. It's a compacted schedule. And, oh, by the way, the Big Ten tournament at Madison Square Garden is over March 4th. Do you like it? What are the challenges to it? What are your thoughts? You know, that's part of putting together a schedule this year that was challenging, you know, because we start the season and then we have to finish it a week early uh, than, than, than the year before. So you got to push more games into a short period of time. Also with scheduling is some of these contracts are five and six and seven years long and there's ACC and then there's the Big East game too and we have a long-standing tradition of playing Seton Hall. So a lot of these games are already done. Like people think I – 
You know, when I took the job, I had no say in last year's schedule. Right. You know, I took the job and we had to play Stony Brook. That was part of a contract that I had signed. And that was really the only game that the rest were done. You know, and, and what happens is the league dictates games and they're talking about adding games for next year, too, to the league game. So there'll be two less non-conference, you know, games in, in the schedule. So what I want to do is and, and now that I've played at the rack, I want to play all our games at the right. rack. I mean, I love it. I think the fans are great. I think the place is rocking. I think we got a home court advantage. You know, so I want to play as many games as possible. Now, it was nice that the ACC game lined up, just happened. We've been on the road for that. We happen to play Florida State at home. It's going to be very challenging. And I'm excited because we get, you know, we get some games at home too. Fordham, that's a long contract. We end up getting Fordham at home. And then Seton Hall just happened to be, you know, back at our place too. So we will play as challenging a schedule again. It's going to be a top 50 schedule by the end of the year. And that's plenty competitive for our program right now and and so i'm excited about all the opportunities to play at home i love playing at the rack i think it's great florida state and seton hall i mean i think that is fantastic i mean seton hall that game last night at the prudential center last season at the prudential center the place was alive i thought it was great and the fact that you get them in the rack now this year is even better It'll be great and they have a great program and this they're ranked in the top 25 and kevin you know coach willard does an awesome job and they get players back that are supposed to be three or four nba players so um, real challenging. Florida State's always great. Leonard Hamilton. We have a very challenging schedule again, just like before, and I'm glad we're playing as many games at, at the rack as possible. And now next year on the flip side, we're going to be playing a lot of games on the road. So, um, you know, it's just the way the schedule kind of breaks out and some of those long-term deals that we have, that's, you know, how it goes. I, I want to ask you about the, uh, the Big Ten in a second, but first we do have a call. Mark, you're on with Coach Steve Peichel on the Coaches Show. What's up, Mark? How you doing, Jerry? Hey. Jerry, I met you last year. You're, um, you're a class act. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Coach, uh, I've been a Rutgers fan since uh, 40 years, and uh, I went to school when Tom Young was here, and uh, I thought Tom Young was a terrific coach, and I, I think you're the best coach we've had since then. I appreciate um, that. He's a class act. <laughs> um, I have a question on a couple of guys. Um, how is, um, how is uh, Miles adjusting to being so far away from home? And how is Eugene's jump shot so far? I mean, does he look better shooting the ball? You know, at first, you, you know, Miles has been terrific. He's from California. He's an engineering major. Um, he's a great student, and he's a great kid. So we're thrilled to add him, and, and I always like those guys with seven-foot-six wingspans. You know, like the, those guys are good to have on your roster, and he can really score around the low post. Um, Eugene, by far, is the most improved player in our program. His body looks great. I mean, he has been, you know, dominant in some of our practices. Um, you know, we're going to play him mostly at the four spot this year. We can move him around. His, his versatility excites me. He can guard one through five, and very few players can guard one through five. So defensively, I really think he's going to have a chance to have an unbelievable year. And, and so very excited. Now, Eugene last summer didn't come to summer school because he was still playing AAU basketball. Mm. So he's the one guy that summer's so important <laughs> You know, they gain weight. They're in the program. So, you know, he got to us late. So you're always playing a little catch-up. But, you know, again, excited about him. I think his sophomore year is going to be outstanding. Thanks right, for the call, now, Mark. All right, we appreciate it. 877-384-1860. Now we'll get more calls up. i uh, take a quick break. Uh, but I do want to get to a couple of other things going around campus. I mentioned the recruiting and all the stuff happening with the build, and uh, we'll do that in just a second. Quick break. Uh, we'll also get your questions on social media, at Rutgers Radio, and somebody get up and ask a question. Over there, go see Jordan uh, and get <laughs> online. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on the Coaches Show. Don't go away. ESPN's Neil Everett here. This college football season, Nissan's putting you in the driver's seat. Go to NissanHeismanHouse.com. Build a customized Titan wrapped in your school's colors. Then register for a chance to win it. Or you can win a trip to the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Enter the Nissan Heisman House sweepstakes. Take on today. Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited. Ends 12 8 17. Open to residents of USDC 18 and older. Official rules at NissanUSA.com backslash Heisman House sweepstakes. Sponsored by Nissan North America. You're on the couch watching the game, and your friend hands you an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. This is a big moment. That's the sound you love. And that new and improved taste? Yeah, that's the refreshing, delicious, real Coca-Cola taste that you just can't get enough of. All this with zero sugar and zero calories. Perfection. And then, touchdown! Refresh your game day with the new and improved taste of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. More with Coach Peichel after this local break. 
This is Rutgers Basketball from IMG. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day special starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. At Rutgers, we're moving the world up. It takes time, skill, grit, change, drive. At Rutgers, that's our nature. It's in our roots because we're the doers, the self-starters, the forward thinkers. And we don't stop. They can't make us. Up is where we move. Now is when we thrive. Together is how we grow. This is Rutgers, where you can change the world. Apply now at admissions.rutgers.edu. All right, welcome back. Quakers Steak and Lube, Route 1, Edison, New Jersey. The Coaches Show with Rutgers head basketball coach Steve Peichel. We have some more social media questions. We'll get to the facilities. But first, we have some questions from the audience. Go. Hello, Coach. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Good luck this year. Thank you. So my question is, uh, none of us have a crystal ball. But if we did, (laughs) three, four, five years from now, what is your future vision of Rutgers basketball in your in your greatest dreams, what, where could we be three, four, five years from now? You know what? I'm excited about where we could be. Hopefully we're in the dance, and, uh, you know, we're a consistent invite to the dance, too. And, you know, we play in that kind of a league, uh, that that's what the good programs do. And we're building this to last, and we're building it around some great cores and some beliefs. And, you know, if I can keep my staff together, I think that's important, and we can continue to recruit quality, high-character kids. Um, you know, that love basketball, and that's what we've really tried to build it around and try to find some guys that, uh, you know, are unpolished gems and polish them up. And, and we do a great job of developing guys. So we're going to continue along that road and I think, you know, slowly build this program into one again that everybody can be proud of. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll give you one from social media here. I like This is from Broccoli Rob. He's actually a good guy. It sounds like a ridiculous name. But Broccoli Rob uh, <laughs> would like you to know, would like to ask you, uh, what would you like to see updated at the rack as you go forward? Well, you know, what do you like about the rack, and what would you like to see improve? I know you're going to love everything about it. You know what, you love though, that place. I really, you know, when, when I took the job, Jim Calhoun said by far the hardest place that he had to coach in. He loved the venue. And, you know, as I went through the year last year, I love it. I love Great. it. Great. So, you know, I know there's some, uh, in, you know, down the road, there's some plans to improve and upgrade some things. I'm so excited about our practice facility being built. That's the first thing, you know, we need to, to get done. But the rack rocks. The fans love it. I mean, it's loud. Um, it's a great home court advantage. And so I like the size of it. And uh, it is good. 8,000 quaint. It can get loud. And you're talking about the RWJ Barnabas Health Athletic Performance Center at Rutgers. I guess the construction is going to begin soon now in November. What does that do in terms of recruiting when you can show kids what's coming? You know, that's been huge. You know, it just shows the commitment that we have. I mean, the league we play in is unbelievable. And, and if you get out to see some of these venues in this conference, you will understand why this practice facility is going to be a huge you know, help to us in the recruiting world uh, and also in the basketball world to have a facility that's open 24 hours, that's not rented out, that's not used for any other, uh, you know, event. So it really has helped us already. In November, they break ground on It's going to be exciting and we're going to get this thing done quickly and it's going to continue to help us recruit, you know, for a long time to come. All right, what do you say we take another question from the crowd? Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Um, so the last guy asked about... Um, a long way into the future. What's the biggest difference the fan is going to see on the court from last year to this year? I mean, I think, you know, if you came to our practice today, just competition. Like, every day we have to compete now. I think last year when you inherit a program, you have different levels, and you know, on your roster. And I think, like, our most competitive practices have been, you know, the last four because Eugene and Deshaun Freeman are going at it. Uh, last year. Deshaun had the four spot wrapped up 
before last season even started. Eugene was trying to figure his way around campus as he came in September. You know, I think there's a competition there. There's a competition now between Corey and Souf. They are going at it. Mike and Gio are going at it in practice. You know, our big guys, Candido and Mamadou and Miles. So I'm so excited that we have guys at every position. We're more talented. We're deeper. And, you know, I really feel like this is a roster that I can do different things with. Like, I plan on pressing and running. Like, we couldn't do that last year. When you have a C.J. Geddes who, who gets up to court once every two trips, you know, type of deal. And I love C.J.'s playing in England right now. But, you know, there's things you can't do defensively or offensively. And then he was real good at walking it up and catching the ball in the post. But that's not particularly how Corey wants to play. You know, so you had a lot of different pieces like that. I think our pieces kind of mesh together now. And I love the fact that we have more leadership on this team. You know, we have some more guys taking ownership, and, and that's exciting to me. Thanks. Well, I'm excited now, so thanks. Thank See you. that? Glad you're excited. Let's get it. So I'm it sounds like it's going to be a much different look, and it's going to be a lot of fun up and down the floor. I thought it was fun last year, uh, but it should be a blast. Let's go one more from the crowd. How you doing? You mentioned before you're a uh, similar fan as me, the Larry Bird, Kevin McHale Celtics <laughs> era Celtics. So um, it made me think, what about as far as college players, give me the best one you've coached against and back to your playing days, wow. best one you played against. Wow. I tell you. Because um, that was a great era. <laughs> a, a guy that I used to love watching play, and I never got a chance to play against him, though, was Pearl Washington. I, I loved the Pearl. Way I thought great. he was unbelievable. Um, and I still say that. I mention these guys' names to our players now, and I'm like, you don't know the Pearl. Like, it's almost disappointing. Different era. Yeah, different era. Um, you know, but I grew up in those Big East days, and I played against some of the I, Alonzo Mornings and, you know, Sherman Douglas, just exciting, you know, basketball players. I played against Billy Donovan. I was a freshman. He was a senior. I couldn't believe how good he was as a senior. That was a Final Four, you know, team. And, and so uh, I'm a big college basketball fan, and, 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 you know, I love our league. You know, every team – in our league. I thought Melo Tremble last year, an unbelievable guard. And, and I always say this to people, that's how good you have to be to play in the pros. Like, you know, a guy like him is fighting for his life to, you know, get on a roster. And Nigel Hayes, I watched him play last night on TV, and I know how good he was at Wisconsin. Sure. He's trying to make the roster now and stuff. So our league is, is tremendous. And seven teams are ranked in different polls throughout the year. So you're going to see at the rack some of the best college basketball talent in, in the country coming to us here in, in, in New Jersey. So I look forward to uh, being a part of those battles. But those are some of the players I, I enjoy watching. Cool. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Dan. All right, we're going to take a quick break. 877-384-1869 is the phone number on Twitter, at Rutgers Radio. He is the head coach, Steve Peichel. We're back in a moment on The Coach's Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732. 777 wing we cater events of any size watch all the games have a great time and enjoy the best wings in the usa 561 route one in edison 732 777 wing for rutgers fans saturday is game day for business owners it's another day in your work week ups gets that and that's why they offer saturday delivery so you can keep things running smoothly even while your customers drop everything for the game stay on top of your game Ship with UPS, official logistics company of Rutgers Athletics. We'll return to Quaker Steak and Lube in 60 seconds. This is Rutgers Basketball from IMG. You're on the couch watching the game and your friend hands you an ice cold bottle of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. This is a big moment. That's the sound you love. And that new and improved taste? Yeah, that's the refreshing, delicious, real Coca-Cola taste that you just can't get enough of. All this with zero sugar and zero calories. Perfection. And then, touchdown! Refresh your game day with the new and improved taste of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. Download the all-new Rutgers Game Day app today. Up-to-the-minute news sent right to your phone. Interactive game updates 
official sideline gear, live stats, free live audio, comprehensive game day maps, real-time social streams, and more. Available in the App Store and Google Play. Get all the latest in everything Scarlet Knights Athletics. He's got it for the Rutgers touchdown. The Rutgers Game Day app. Download today. All right, got about 15 more minutes here. Welcome back inside Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison. The Coaches Show with Rutgers basketball coach Steve Peichel and men's basketball flex ticket plans enabling fans to select any four games. It's pretty cool for this season. It includes the much-anticipated matchups with Florida State, which is November 28th, Michigan State, December 5th. It's quick. Seton Hall, December 16th. you got Wisconsin, Ohio State, Indiana. You can create your own package, four-game flex ticket plans, $140 for 200 level center tickets, $120 for 200 level wing tickets, and $60 for 300 level tickets. Make sure you get them. Going to be a fun season. I'll take another one from social media coach. This is Steve Yanofsky. Uh, he says, Coach, what has surprised you most about the job and the school since you were hired last year? You know, like I said before, um, uh, the power of the alumni base has really uh, been exciting, and the people. You know, there's great people at Rutgers. And, uh, you know, we have a lot to sell and a lot to be excited about. It's a great academic institution. You know, we're, we're improving all of our facilities as we speak. We play in the best league in the country. It's the most fan watched. 42 years running now, the Big Ten has the most fans watching college basketball of any league in the country. And this isn't just one year. This is 42 straight years. So when you go to Wisconsin, 18,000 are going to be there. When we go to Indiana, when you... When you come to the rack, it's going to be packed, you know. So it's an exciting league. It's an exciting university. I think it's our time, too, uh, you know, as a university. And, and so most excited about that. Great leadership. Again, these things don't happen without that, and, and we certainly have that. You mentioned all the schools and all the big games you're going to play. The schedule in terms of Big Ten play, and, and I looked at it, there's a lot of quick turnarounds. What are the challenges that you guys as a staff have to deal with to be ready within a couple of days to play that game again? I mean, we've, we've had a meeting the other day, and you'd be shocked. We're already talking about prep time in between games and scouts and pre-scouts so I can get stuff weeks in advance. So if we have an extra 15 minutes in practice, I want to work against some of the things that I'm going to see. Um, the way the season has been compacted by the you know, Big Ten tournament being a week earlier has really affected you know your prep time and and so you got to do more and you got to hope for no injuries too because right. sprained ankle now you could miss three games um we have four of our first five games uh, against ranked teams and the one team that we're playing is wisconsin who's been ranked for the last 11 years running in the top 25 so they're pretty good too and i i find it hard to believe by the time we play them they won't be ranked right you know either so we have short turnarounds in those games um, you know, again, the staff has to do an unbelievable job of preparing our guys. And, and uh, you know, we have to be ready to make game adjustments quickly. And we're going to have to do a great job. That's why it's so critical right now at this time of the year when we have time, we have to have everything in because we're not going to have a lot of time in between games to implement new stuff. So we're really checking off all the out-of-bounds sidelines, last-second plays, you know, different press offenses that we're going to have, every offense for different zones. We have to do all that stuff leading into the season, so we have that in our bag of tricks. So when short prep time, we've already seen or, um, you know, put in the things that we're going to need to utilize. And the importance of depth with a schedule like this where you might have nicks and, you know, bumps and bruises and a guy maybe can only give you seven minutes, whereas the game before you were counting on him for 30. Um, do you en envision 10, 11, 12 guys that could that could? You know uh, what, I'm shot? most excited about that because we did have a lot of drop-off last year when we, you know, went to the bench and we had a couple players we could count on, but we were always digging deep for some quality minutes from – from other guys this year we're just much deeper and I think that there's not a huge gap between one two and three you know in the depth chart so I'm excited about that and that bodes well too for injuries foul trouble all those kind of things that in the past would really hurt us um, you know so uh, that's going to be important and I think we're much more athletic so hopefully that makes we're more durable we can do a little bit more things adjustment wise you know with our roster 
When you look at year one, and you didn't hit every arena, you'll hit some new ones this year too. Maybe you've been them been there before, but what was the most difficult place to walk in and play? I mean, the teams were good. I mean, Northwestern, that last game, again, a phenomenal wow, basketball game. game. Too, yeah. yeah, great game. What was the toughest gym that you were in, the toughest arena? You know, I really thought, you know, the best team I thought we played in a tough environment, I thought was Michigan State at Michigan State. And they played great that night. I remember Tom Izzo saying that. But they were a very difficult team with a deep roster um, in a tough venue, a packed place. Purdue, very uh, difficult place to yeah. play. Everything's you know, right on top of you there. It was pretty packed, cool. And then they have Swanigan and Isaac. <laughs> you know, they have a few guys, 7'3", that people just don't have. Uh, you know, tough, tough venues. Uh, all of them are a little bit challenging. And how they, by the time we played Northwestern, that place was rocking. And, you know, they were very much in the NCAA tournament hunt. And so very difficult place, loud. Um, so they're all kind of unique. I look forward to, you know, we'll be at a few places. We didn't play at Michigan last year. Mm -hmm. We didn't play at Nebraska. So we'll hit some of those other places, too. That at they Minnesota? Say, at Minnesota. Right. They say Nebraska is as hard a place to play at as there is in the league. So um, it doesn't get any easier. No, it doesn't. And you mentioned just because you're talking about tournament and stuff like that, the Big Ten tournament, what did you take from the experience? Because not only was it your first time in the Big Ten tournament, but you got a win in the Big Ten tournament, and we were there, and it was you know, a wild few days, a lot of fun. It, it, it really was, and I love the fact that, you know, we checked off a lot of things last year, you know, winning a road game, winning a tournament game, you know, doing those things. I hope that becomes more the norm uh, than the exception. Uh, but, you know, to go on the road and play in that big stage, and we played a very good Ohio State team, which had 10 top 100 recruits on their roster, um, you know, and to play well down there, confidence, I think, that bodes well moving forward here. That experience is going to help us. And every time you take a step up the ladder, it helps you. Um, you know, and with our veteran guys getting a taste of winning a, you know, game on the road in a neutral site in, in, in the Big Ten tournament, you know, is, is a great thing. And, and, and that experience that they had hopefully will bode well. And now we're playing at home. It'll be a home game for oh, us. Oh, no doubt. Now. At the Garden, for at sure. Garden. Is, that, is that noticeable when you go and you talk to recruits about possibly coming to Rutgers? The fact that, you know, you won a game in the big tournament last year in your first year, is that something that's a selling point that you can use? You know, I think everything's a selling point. And, you know, we went from one win in the Big Ten the year before to four, you know. And, and you know, people may not seem like that's a lot. That's that's a big jump in a great league. And, and uh you know, looking forward to those kind of, you know, incremental additions and, and, and moving this program forward. And, and, and those kind of jumps are, are really important. Seven wins to 15. Everyone wants 20, 25. I got it. But you can't go to 20, 25 before you get to 15. So, you know, you got to, you know, stay the course, keep working hard, believe in what you believe in, which is what I do. And, and I've been in this spot before. I'm very confident we could build this program, you know, make people proud, but it's, not going to happen overnight and and guys got to get better and we got to find some guys that believe in us and and we have and 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 i'm excited about you know where this is all headed and one of those big 10 wins last year was on the road at penn state and that was the game it was an afternoon game and i remember you after the team meal you got the group together uh inside that banquet room mm -hmm. and you know watching you and listening to you and even watching the players you look like you just knew you were going to win the game are you ever i guess the answer is yes but can you get a sense how the team is going to play? Like, do, you, do you know when it's going to be a bad day just looking at them, or is it you kind of never know what you're going to get until the ball's tipped? You know, as, as you grow with your program, you kind of do know those things. But last year, I didn't know any of that. Right. You know, it was the first time for us everywhere. And the hardest thing to do in college basketball is win on the road. So, like, the percentages say it. Teams shoot better at home. The referees give a couple more whistles at home, the hardest thing to do. People think it's easy to go on the road, and you watch good teams go on the road, and, and, and they struggle. And, you know, league play hadn't been kind to us, especially on the road. We didn't have habits of winning on the road. And, you know, it takes time to kind of build that confidence. And, you know, I started looking in our players' eyes as the year went on, and I, I saw that they were confident. They were confident in our, us on the defensive end. Um, we have to make them confident on both ends of the floor this year, which is how you really turn the corner. And, and, and make a program really good. Uh, but we will do that. And as the year got on, they, they were confident in our game plans and they were confident if they, if they did what you know, was asked of them that, that you know, good things would happen. And, and pretty much in every game, we were there. The game plan was you know, solid. The players tried to execute it. 
you know, you just fall short sometimes when a guy's seven foot three, Isaac, and and, and your guy is six foot eight, trying to box him out, and you know, and they're a top twenty five team, and you're on the road, and, and that job doesn't get done. So you hope that we can get a few of those guys, you know, talent wise too. But stay the course is a great thing, and I have tremendous confidence. I've been down this road in a lot of builds. Um, it's fun when you build, though, sure. too. And you got to appreciate the steps involved. Everyone wants to go from zero to 100 miles an hour. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Just enjoy the builds, enjoy the successes, and, and build off them. And the coach, uh, the voice of Coach Steve Peichel here at Quaker Steak and Lube. We have one final break. We'll come back and wrap it up in a moment on the coach's show. When Samantha was in dire need of a new heart, she turned to RWJ Barnabas Health who performs more adult heart transplants than any healthcare system on the East Coast. I'm still here. Jean cherishes every moment spent with her great grandkids, thanks to our kidney transplant program that ranks among the nation's top 10. Still here. Robert promised his granddaughter he'd make it to her next birthday. Thanks to New Jersey's only lung transplant center, he did. I'm not going anywhere. From corneal and pancreatic transplants to heart, kidney, and lung, our patients aren't who they used to be. They're better. Learn more about our transplant centers at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center, St. Barnabas Medical Center, and Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital. Visit rwjbh.org slash transplant. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. More with Coach Peichel after this local break. This is Rutgers Basketball from IMG. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. When you're looking for tickets to that sold-out event, there's only one place to go. TickCity.com, the official secondary ticket partner of Rutgers Athletics. Scarlet Knight fans can save 10% on all orders when you use the discount code RUTGERS at checkout. From sporting events to the hottest concerts, Broadway and family shows across the country, all your ticket needs are covered at your fan-friendly ticket source. TickCity.com, that's T-I-X-C-I-T-Y.com. All right, got about a minute left or so here from Quaker Steak and Lube, Route 1 in Edison with head coach Steve Peichel. Quickly, uh, and I went off a lot of time, and I apologize for that, but uh, you mentioned the team building and the chemistry. Talk about the Tunnel to Towers run that you guys partake in. An unbelievable day, you know, really. Uh, we've been talking a lot about unselfish and characteristics of a team that we want to uh, be, and that highlights all those things uh, when Steve and the firefighter took that journey through the tunnel to everyone was running away from it he was running to it and has a family and all those things and I said to our players talk about unselfish um, he sacrificed his life to help somebody else out and you know our players had a great day that day it was great you know for them to learn a lesson about life and being unselfish and what this guy gave up you know uh, to make other people's lives better. So it was a great day. Great experience, no doubt. And so has this been. Coach, thank you very much for coming out. Thank you, everybody, thank you for everybody coming out tonight. Out. It should it be a much. great, great season. I know I'm looking forward to it. Talk to a lot of people. They're looking forward to it. Best of luck to you. And we get it going, what, about four weeks from now? Yeah. November 10th. <laughs> it's right around the corner. Make sure you get your tickets. Come out. Pack the rack. All right? I Pack the rack. I everybody, thank you very much for coming out. My special thanks to Paul Schrager. Guy keeps us on the air all the time. Everybody have a great night. We will see you at the rack. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Rutgers Basketball Preview Show featuring Coach Steve Peichel. Tonight's show has been brought to you by...
For more information on Rutgers basketball, visit scarletknights.com. The Rutgers Basketball Preview Show has been a special presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.